Okay, so this is a short podcast for the development of uh, soft skills. It's uh, part of the Monte Carlo linear programming module, and it's meant to be background in probability tasks. In this part of the module, I focus on some ways to improve soft skills, or first define what soft skills are, and uh, the best way to do that is to to look at this advert. Uh, this advert from a company who's looking to recruit people with maths, maths degrees. Okay, so this company is a data science position, and this blockchain is part of the uh, uh, big. There's a Bitcoin-like type thing. I'm not sure if it's ab absolutely Bitcoin. So they kind of tell you what the what you what you will do. They're looking for data scientists, and they want you to work on the digital currency, digital currency, uh, and then they have some of the skills you need. Okay, the first one is integrity. That's something that, that's a soft skill. Uh, kind of passion for explanation. That's kind of you're interested in learning new things, interested in cryptocurrencies, and then there's kind of soft skills that are interested in being able to work on a team, and uh, because you know you work in a team, it's a lot easier to get jobs done. And uh, this thing at the bottom is also a soft skill. You should be able to adapt easily to meet the needs of the massive growth. This means they want you to learn things very quickly and move to different roles. And then this thing, set down what you need. Finally, we get down here. Is the kind of technical skills are Python or SQL as part of databases. This is important as well, but the kind of soft skill stuff, the stuff is just as important. And then they give you uh, what I like to talk about the perks is uh, you get to work in London, you get unlimited vacation, which is pretty cool. Uh, the one thing I'd ask in any of you is whether I get paid in Bitcoin, because it could depend on uh, what day it is, uh, the value of your salary. Okay, so so employees looking uh, as well as kind of technical skills and ability with mathematics, bowling and analysis, uh, you know, and using software packages like Simulate or statistical techniques. Employees also need to be able to work in teams and have good communication skills, be able to give a talk, and these things are generally known as soft skills. I mean, it's harder to develop soft skills uh, by the kind of lecture homework exam model. Uh, that, that we do for kind of mathematics type things and, and uh, uh, there are many possibilities to actually improve your soft skills, we put you in groups and uh, part of the reason for that is when you're working on coursework together you've got to start developing ways of how to uh, to work with other people, give and take, Just one person can be a leader of this bit one person can do the coordination, different roles in the group and how do you work on those skills so there's possibilities there but uh, you may not notice them, it's kind of important to notice them because A, uh, employers want you we have good skills of group working and uh, as well as developing good skills what to do if somebody doesn't turn up it's also important to document them as well because if you're in an interview they might say well this role requires somebody who's working in teams can you give you any evidence and if you can give some evidence of how you worked on a course with some problem or some issue or how you work together particularly well using uh, some kind of uh, technology then giving an example is kind of a more compelling case. And as well as another point, part of this uh, soft skills is the ability to learn new things, like new pieces of software or technology. And uh, this sometimes comes with the root, this is sometimes known as continued professional development. You have to be able to show that uh, you have the skills to, to learn new things. Okay, so one way to develop these new skills is. Uh, uh, and in addition to kind of the, the mathematics the techniques and programming techniques you're learning on the degree uh, is to set some kind of goal and uh, so the problem with setting goals can, I mean sometimes it's the same as setting a new year's resolution that you're going to go to the gym more often or uh, learn a new language so I have some examples here down at the bottom of some career development goals which are worthy but they're a bit vague so you just say well I'll get a bit better at programming perhaps I'll do it in Excel learn better in Excel macros, I'll communicate better, perhaps I'll learn how to speak Spanish. Uh, the problem with these things is they're a bit, they're a bit vague in the sense you don't know how long it's going to take you to learn Spanish and uh, you don't know uh, how you're going to actually achieve this goal, you're going to go to night school, get some tapes and this is true for the programming in Excel as well. So one way is to make the goals uh, more achievable 
uh, so put them in a framework and people like to do this in this kind of smart framework and obviously smart's an acronym the original paper which i have linked in the pdf slides done by a guy called duran and this is a way of kind of improving the manage the management of a, a a team or a company but it's also used a lot for uh, career development okay so what are smart goals for writing goals in a way that's uh, that helps you to achieve them so you want the goal to be specific you know you, you don't want to be very vague you want it to be measurable how can you tell you're getting close to uh, achieving a goal you want it to be achievable we all want to play for England and football uh, but we have to uh, rein back our uh, what we can actually do so it should also be a kind of realistic goal within a given time frame and there are some fun things time related it's not just some vague goal like every uh, you know just some kind of vague goal improve my programming skills you say well I want to prove something by the, this specific time okay so if you first think well I want to improve my communication skills because maybe when you're giving talks and your friends the group have told you that you're a bit quiet in presentations and you look a bit nervous to convert that into a goal in, within the smart framework you could be something like in the presentation the next semester's module I will lead the presentations and I will appear confident and in the next month I'll read two books on public speaking such as uh, well uh, this one's on how to give a TEDx talk and this one's on uh, how to from a voice coach how to prove the use of your voice and uh, the mark in the presentation will improve by over 10 percent and my friends will compliment me on my confidence so this is in the sense that it's uh, timely because I mentioned the uh, next semester's module and then there's some way to say whether you've achieved the goal or not you've got the mark on the presentation's gone up and your friends no longer say you look very nervous in presentations okay so once you have a smart goal so the goal is sort of where you're going the next time you produce a plan to achieve this and one kind of way of doing this is to write it in terms of an, uh, in terms of an action plan uh, and this just breaks down the steps you what you get to do to achieve the goal and uh, the jargon is this is an action plan so an action plan would start off with a statement of the goal and the smart framework uh, and then you just break down how you're going to actually uh, achieve these different steps and then you have a little date and this is kind of optional but if you want to give, put that thing a reward they have cake and more cake and then there's various little nuances so often when we're teaching we have to produce some modules, produce an action plan to how to improve things. And uh, and then these things will get quite complicated. Okay, to show this is real, so this is a web page. They're talking about career success, how to develop your personalized plan of success. And uh, this is a web page they're talking about uh, uh, how to set smart goals for a kind of career here it is specific, measurable, actionable, realistic and time framed this slide here is an example from the University of Kent and they show how to, to this is for a part of a kind of careers project and they discuss various things and how to do an action plan and they have a little model where am I now, where do I want to be and how do I get there and then they have a little example uh, here so here's their objective, their smart goal, and, and then down there they have like how they have little steps. Uh, each step has a little date, and then this is totally uh, optional if you want to put a reward as well. And also they have down at the bottom what problems I'm likely to face. I mean the minimal one I want to do is to break getting the goal in just into a couple of steps with some kind of dates on it. Okay, so inclusions, employers often ask for soft skills as well as mathematical skills, they're equally important. And the way to train things is to have some kind of goal, development goal, that you can kind of uh, use your experience when you're doing coursework to work on some soft skills at the same time. And the goal should be kind of smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time related. And so for the employability uh, question, there's a question on how do you. Uh, uh, improve your skills to do what your employer wants. So one way to do this uh, will be to put it within this action plan and have smart goals. And uh, so here I have uh, for the, I have references to the two web pages: the, the one on action plans from the University of Kent, 
and the one on smart goals from careers.